Hi, this is Ryan from Budget Tattooing, without a hat on today. And uh, we wanted to do another video that's going to hopefully give you something to think about. Today we're going to be talking about what it means to be a professional in the tattoo world. Alright. Alright, now that's over. Um, this is something that I, I, I talk to quite a bit with uh, newer artists specifically. They're trying to break into the industry and um, do something to like, you know, feel value or worth that they feel like they're moving forward, progressing and becoming, you know, hopefully um, a professional in, in the field of trade that they decide to study. And this is weird because the term professional inside of tattooing is so loaded and I don't think that people talk about it enough that we could try to figure out, you know, exactly what it means to be professional. Would that you know, that'd be kind of like a good idea, right? So more often than not, we're going to be seeing the word professional or pro, right? Which is short for that. We're going to see the word pro a lot in tattooing, right? If you want a pro machine, right? We sell to professionals only. We do this, we do that. And more often than not, you're told that professional means that you work in a licensed shop, right? It's just that you're licensed. So that's my handwriting today, rock and fucking roll. Um, if you're licensed inside the industry, it means that you're supposed to have uh, somewhat working knowledge to be able to accomplish the tasks at hand, right? Um, but the weird thing about this, I can't, I've got to actually try to write that better. <laughs> the weird thing about this is, right, is that if you are in a licensed, let's do that, shop. Um, when we think about this, if you're in a licensed shop, like there should be some type of set requirements or something that everyone is going to have to meet to become professional and working in the shop setting. But in a lot of states, there actually is zero regulation or there is an incomplete um, maybe requirement for people to become a uh, licensed professional or, you know, in some places like I, I work in Oregon State and Washington, I work in a bunch of different states in the United States um, or even like in Canada, like zero regulation. Um, that word pro doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Because you don't have to go to school, you don't have to have a certificate showing that you have that basic knowledge. Realistically, it's all that you're just working in a place that is licensed, right? In some states, you don't even need a business license to operate this um, shop. So this is misleading, right? For you to be a professional, um, it just means you have to have something, right? Basically, it's just a form of gatekeeping. If somebody who works at one of these places that sells something doesn't like you, they don't have to, right? It's just like a right to refusal of service. So professional really doesn't mean a whole lot in that sense, right? Um, but it is like a form of gatekeeping, and we get to see this a lot in tattooing, right? Where pro is actually, it is gatekeeping, right? We'll notice a lot of people inside the industry are working at professional shops and they look at people and they think that, you know, meritocracy wise, like your work doesn't look as good as mine. Therefore, I am more professional or better than you are, which doesn't make a lot of sense because you can have a tattoo that is technically perfect, but maybe doesn't look as flashy as another person. And because it doesn't have that aesthetic like pull, people don't think that you are or other people are as good as that person who is talking. And so we use this form of gatekeeping inside of tattooing to kind of control the masses and also to market products effectively, right? Um, the term pro is thrown around a lot by pigment companies, machine builders, things like this, right? We have professional grade. So we have to ask ourselves, if we want to be thinking about something, what is professional, right? What is professional grade? Okay, so let's take inks for example. I'm not gonna use brands because I don't wanna get sued. But if they only sell to professionals, it's professional grade, well, how do we know that it is, right? How many people out there actually look at the ingredients of the pigment? How many of them look at where the pigment is sourced from? Like how many of these products do we have? Do we have a complete picture about what they actually put in them? Is there something that's in them that makes them better than someone else's pigment? Or are all the raw ingredients kind of the same and maybe there's just different surfactants inside of them that make them, you know, have a different level of performance, which we can get into that in another video. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? A professional grade, if, if all of the pigments are basically the same product, they just have different labels, why would we choose one pro-rated graded, um, like, pigment or other thing over someone else's, right? Um, what 
what these companies are doing, same with like machines, like this is a professional grade machine. Like if you're good at what you do and you're professional or not, you're doing a tattoo, like the end result, the user's interpretation of the quality of work is usually gonna be that great to see if you're a pro or not, right? If they're unhappy, you did not do it a professional job. It's like drawing up a blueprint for a house, right? I'm, a, I'm an architect, I'm a professional architect. You do up a blueprint and somebody's like, I don't like it, it sucks. Well, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not professional. <laughs> it just means they don't fucking like it, right? But at the same time, if you are professional, you should have been able to make something that they liked, right? So it's this weird quandary with this stuff. Anyways, so professional grade is actually a marketing term. Well, let's put an R in there. Marketing term. So think about it this way. If you watch basketball or football or sports or something else, right? And you are looking at a person who is a professional that plays in these things and they're your fan, right? So the X person in basketball, they wear this specific brand of shoes. Cool, I love to play basketball as well, you may say to yourself. So I wanna go out and buy shoes that are branded off of this person. And in hopes that because I like to play this and they are good, I'm gonna buy their shoes and it will improve my game. So that's, that's simple marketing, right? That's why we have these these branded things where people like want to go out and support the person. Maybe they like them or maybe they actually think that they can get better by using them. And I mean, if you think about it in one way, it could be true, right? If I went out to play basketball and I was wearing heels, my performance may be hindered in comparison if I was wearing actual basketball shoes, right? Branded or otherwise. Um, but if we have two shoes that are made the exact same, right? This is a great analogy, I guess where I have two basketball shoes, but they're used by different players and they have different names on them and they have different this and different that. How much of a performance enhancement um, are we gonna get off of buying player X's shoes who maybe is better versus player Y's who, you know, is maybe whatever. It, it doesn't make sense, right? The shoes aren't gonna matter realistically within a point if they're designed for the same purpose, which is what we can see like with the pigments and the machines and all this other stuff, right? Professional grade doesn't really mean anything as long as you know what you're doing, right? Uh, you could have a person who doesn't know how to play basketball who's wearing the most expensive sneakers in the world playing against a professional who's in heels, I, there's pretty good chance that the professional is still gonna win, right? So it's not about how these things are being labeled to sell them to you, right? It's about how well you know how to use them. So if this is a marketing term, what we have to think about is why are they marketing things to us and making us feel that you know we're professional or not. This is sponsored artists, things like this that we see inside of tattooing. It's because we don't have to question them because there is this meritocracy built up inside of um, tattooing, right? If your tattoos don't look as good as this person's, you don't have a right to speak, which doesn't make sense, right? If you know more about line work than someone else does, maybe somebody doesn't use a line, maybe all that they do is use mags, well, then you would have a, a better rounded knowledge of this specific thing. So you should be able to talk, right, than another person. Or what if you just have a very well-rounded thing? You don't have a style to apply instead of tattooing. Well, then you should have a better grasp and knowledge of how to approach different things than somebody who focuses on only one thing. You should. It doesn't mean you will. But I mean, like, this is, this is what it's going to go back into. Our... our shortcomings inside the industry and our insecurities make us vulnerable to specific wording that we see such as professional or pro grade right because we don't know everything and tattooing is so empathetic like there's so much touch tactile learning without a lot of science behind it we're forced to not have that thing to fall back on we can look in a book check online or ask a friend that knows right it's always going to come down to one of our professional graded things isn't working right if you do a bad tattoo, especially when you're learning, it's gonna come down to one of three things, right? And anyone you talk to, on average, is gonna tell you to change these three things, right? One is gonna come down to your brand of ink. Which much like our analogy with the shoes, doesn't make a lot of sense. Pigment's pigment, right? That's gonna come down to your needles. What brand are you using? Which, once again, doesn't make a lot of sense. As long as they're sharp, they should be able to work, right? And the last one's gonna come down to your machines. On average, over 20 years, these are the things that I see people almost universally saying, if you don't do a good job when you're learning, you need to change one of these three things. But it doesn't make sense. If I have a machine that's worth $20, personally, and I've tested this, and there's a lot of artists out there that do this as well, I can do the tattoo just as effectively as if I use a tattoo machine that costs $1,200. 
It's because I know how to tattoo, right? The technique is there. You're just applying it in different ways. It may feel differently. It's like driving a car. I can drive a you know tractor trailer, 16 wheeler, whatever, right? I can also drive a Honda Civic. I can drive a motorcycle and a Skidoo. And I've done all these things because I know how I've had I've had experience. So, in saying that, right? You shouldn't have to worry about this stuff as long as you know what you're doing. So think about this. This is thinking about. Think about what pro or professional means to you and how it's being utilized maybe to manipulate your ability to grow as an artist. And also think about what's being marketed to you and why these things are always the fallback as to why you need to change them to improve. That's it. Let me know. Comments, whatever. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're going to start making some videos again. Anyways, that's it for today. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.